Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Friday, everybody. I want to thank y'all so much for joining me today, y'all. We are not selling anything, which is probably a good thing because I'm a little off my A game today. I have a huge headache. I've had a headache since yesterday morning. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Vicki, for helping moderate and keep an eye on the chat today. Y'all, we're not making anything today, but what we are doing is talking about what we're going to do next week. I'm going to put on the screen some fabrics that you can cut and get ready for next week's project and then maybe sew with me live next Friday. So I'll put that up on the screen here in a minute. Then we're going to chit chat about internet safety a little bit. I have some scam alerts for y'all. So stay tuned for that. And then I thought we could do a QA. and a If y'all have questions about projects you're working on, if I don't know the answers, maybe someone here does. And if they don't know in the live chat, maybe come back in a day or two and see if anybody's left some uh, comments in the comment section in the video. Delia, thank you so much. Yeah, I've been drinking a combination of coffee, which is not good, right? Because that dehydrates you. But I'm hoping the caffeine sometimes helps my headaches. But I'm also drinking water, too. So I'm just both. Sometimes the caffeine does help my headache. I don't know that it's working, though, for this headache. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see y'all. Uh, I saw that y'all have some nasty weather. I saw, who was it? Let me scroll back up. Luann in Canada is getting snow this weekend. Holy cow. Snow. Bundle up. Bundle up. Kristen, you've been watching me for years. Yeah, I was just looking through my history here on YouTube. It's like five years now. That's crazy, y'all. <laughs> that is so crazy. Anthony said, check your blood pressure. I'm sure it's probably high, especially right before I get ready to go live. Always get nervous. But I'm pretty sure. Okay, y'all, I like to keep it real with you. And who knows what I'm going to say when I'm live, but I'm pretty sure it's like a hormonal thing. It happens every month. Darlene, thank you so much for helping moderate today. It happens every month. A day or two of headaches. TMI, right? <laughs> you never know what, what we're going to talk about here. It's so great to see y'all. Ooh, Cheryl just got a Cricut Maker after watching a mug rug. Ooh, how do you like your Cricut Maker? How do you like it? Susie said, I remember your beginning. If you scroll back to those videos, y'all. <laughs> I think, you know, no matter what we're doing, we always show progress and growth, right? Making quilts. Uh, maybe you crochet or knit. Maybe you're into painting. Going back and taking a look at your earlier work is always a good check to see how much you've grown, right? <laughs> It's so great to see you. So while we're just chit-chatting right here in the beginning, y'all, here's the thing. We're going to do a chit-chatty Friday every once in a while, especially through the next couple months, right? Because we're all busy. We're all so busy. And uh, I kind of like this because for those of you who like these kind of formatted videos, it gives us time to just chat and I can actually read the comments as they come along. Uh, and it gives me an opportunity to slow down a little bit. And uh, so I really like that. If the live chat, just chatting, isn't your thing, guess what? Next Friday, we are doing a project. And let me show you what you can get ready. Uh, in the upcoming week to join me next Friday. So let me put that on the screen. I'll scoot over here. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all are so sweet. Oh, you just got your Cricut Maker, Cheryl. That is awesome. All right, you're going to have to keep us updated. Let us know what you think. So what you need for next week, y'all. Okay, so let me show you what we're making. Okay, I watched a video. I watched lots of videos here on YouTube. 
and I came across, well, I came across this video because I'm doing a cathedral window quilt, right? And I'm going to show you that here in a little bit. And that's something we're going to visit down the road. <laughs> so stay tuned. But in, I had never done a cathedral window quilt. So I was trying to learn all the different, y'all, there's like a hundred different ways to do anything. And because I've never done a cathedral window quilt and it's on my like bucket list of quilts to make, right? Of course, I'm looking at tutorials, I'm reading blogs. There's a hundred different ways to make that quilt. And so I've been in the testing and trials of which way works best for me because we're all different. So in my internet search for how to make that quilt, I came across a video and his channel name is called Stitch with Rick. And he made a cathedral window ornament. Ooh, here it is. Isn't that so cute? So he showed his version of how he made the cathedral window ornament. And I was like, you know what? I want to make one. So I made one. And of course, I did mine, followed his tutorial. And uh, I changed just a couple of things because as individual crafters and creators, we all have different things that work better for us, right? So um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this cathedral window ornament. And uh, this is what you need to make it along with me next Friday. We're going to do it live. So you have a week. You could just jot these things down and then join me next Friday. Anthony said, I have a Cricut 3 and can't figure it out. Ooh. See, I have a scan and cut, so I'm not much help when it comes to giving technical advice with a Cricut. Although it's a cutting machine and it kind of operates the same. The software is different. The functions are different. Uh, so I wish I could help a Cricut 3. I would just be watching tons and tons of videos. Anything I could find on the machine, I'd be watching it, Anthony. Oh, it's Denise. Okay. Sorry, Denise. Although I probably won't remember that. Let me try. De Anthony is Denise. Anthony is Denise. Y'all might have to remind me that. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara, Harlan City got in touch with you. That cathedral quilt... Is beautiful yes they aren't they so pretty I made one and it's so heavy yes I suspect that this will be a quilt that'll go on our bed but it'll be turned down when it's time to sleep <laughs> Delia you've got a scan and cut and you're still trying to learn it ooh I have a few videos here on my channel Luann, yes, you can cut fabric with your scan and cut. Absolutely. With your Cricut, too, if you have a Cricut. But I cut applique all the time with my scan and cut. So these are the things. You'll need four different fabrics. The four different fabrics you're cutting, make sure they're all different colors or different patterns, right? And then uh, you'll need just a handful of polyfill, some DMC thread or some thicker thread, right? Some stronger thread, a sewing needle, a button, and about eight inches of thinner ribbon for the hanger. That's what you'll need for next week. Okay, good, Barbara. I'm glad he got in touch with you. Yeah, check out, I don't, I have like a handful of videos cutting applique with the scan and cut. And let me just tell you, I, because I love putting words, if you haven't noticed and you've been around for a little while on my channel, I love putting words onto uh, my projects. But I have a little bit of a tremor, like essential tremors. 
And so cutting smaller applique, uh, I struggle with that. And so the scan and cut saves me so much time and you get perfect applique shapes. I love to use it. Lisa, you need to break out that scan and cut. Uh, how wide is your wedding band? Let's see. Let me measure it, Barbara. I can't get it off right now because my finger is a little swollen. Let me put it on my cutting mat. Uh, my wedding band is made from a silver, it's all silver, Vermont State Quarter. So, yeah, he ordered it. It's silver. And it is a quarter inch wide. That's how wide it is. But that's actually a Vermont State Quarter. <laughs> That's where he's from. Do you have any tutorials on the scan and cut? What is it under? I do. Let's pull that up on the screen. You want to do that? So you could see. Uh, so you could see what to look for. Let me share my screen. We'll do that. Let me go over to YouTube. My screen's going to look a little funny for a second. I got to maneuver over to YouTube. And let's just do Lisa Capen scan and cut right in, in the search bar at the top, right? And then we're going to scroll. We're going to see what comes up. Yeah, there's some uh, cutting fabric applique with a scan and cut and binding your mug rug video. So that, that's one that's going to pop up. And then the Brothers Scan and Cut 2, direct cutting, cutting stamped images. That's a lot of fun. That's not fabric, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, the nautical mug rug patterns uh, using the Brothers Scan and Cut. So you can check that out. Making a mosaic with fabric using the Brothers Scan and Cut. And then I show you how to create an offset in Inkscape. Uh, I have Brother Scan and Cut listed on here. I'm not sure why it's actually an Inkscape video. <laughs> I'm sure I mentioned the Scan and Cut in there. Uh, I think there's some other videos that I've done too. Oh, I use my scan and cut in the Hexi video. If you want to watch that, uh, I think I fast forward through the part uh, where I'm actually cutting out the Hexies, but I did use my scan and cut to cut out those Hexies perfectly. Uh, so yeah, I use it here and there in other videos too, but um, those are some videos that you can check out first. But y'all, I'm not the only creator who shares uh, lots of really good tutorials about the scan and cut. And so uh, check them all out. Check them all out. I'm going to take this off the screen. I think y'all got that. If I need to pull this back up, y'all let me know. Anitra, enjoy your lunch. Barbara, that's awesome. It makes an awesome gift. It really does. Hazel, hello. You're just home from the holidays. I hope you had a wonderful trip. Debbie, um, my scan and cut is a CM350. So mine is a little bit older. I've had it maybe four years, three or four years now. And uh, so I don't know that they even make this the CM350 anymore, but I know you can purchase old stock, like people who had them in stock and never sold them yet. And I know you can buy them secondhand, but of course the newer and the more um, advanced models are out currently. Why were you making a NASA quilt? <laughs> I wanna see pictures of it. I wanna see pictures when you're done.
Trinita, I loved my gift. Y'all want to see what Trinita made me? I'm going to hold that up for a second. Trinita, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to show it and brag on Trinita for just a second. She sent me uh, one of the casserole trivets. And Miss Trinita, your sewing has improved leaps and bounds leaps and bounds girls since i met you you are doing so good i just want to brag on trinita for a second how awesome is that i hope you don't mind trinita i love it thank you so much i love it it's going downstairs i'm gonna use it luann i hope you do start to use it you have the same one i do What's on your shirt today? Uh, today is a great day to quilt. But not really for me, though, because I have a headache. <laughs> I am going to be quilting. I have a couple small projects loaded onto the long arm, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. And I have a couple uh, label orders to sublimate this afternoon. So I am working this afternoon, but I really don't feel good. Sylvia, thank you so much for moderating. You have a cricket. And you've been cutting pumpkins out of cardstock. Aww. Y'all, it's so great to see you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about before I move on to that cathedral window quilt. Uh, if... If you're, not a, if you're on Facebook and you're not a member of Creative Crew, we would love to have you in our group. Make sure uh, that when you join, there's a link in the description box to join Creative Crew, but you got to answer the two security questions, right? Or we can't let you in. Also, if you're in the Creative Crew and you want your friends or your family members to join and you send them an invite, you might want to reach out to let them know because when you send them invites... If they, don't, if they don't come back and answer the two security questions, then we can't let them in. And we feel like really meanies when we can't let them in, but they have to personally come in and answer the two questions if they want to join. Where was I going with that? <laughs> I forget. Oh, creative crew. Oh, we were having a, a talk yesterday. Uh about security issues and primarily based around Etsy, but y'all, it's everywhere. <laughs> there are so many people out there trying to steal your information, trying to scam you, trying to make money off of other people's hard-earned work. It is all over the place. It's not just Etsy. It is everywhere. It is everywhere. Lisa, I do quilt table runners. I quilted uh, a bed runner not that long ago for a client. I sure did. Uh, <clears throat> so we were having this, this discussion on the creative crew yesterday. And uh, I just want to let you know, when you're on the internet, please protect yourselves. As a shopper, please know where you are buying your stuff. Y'all, I have people trying to scam uh, people as Lisa Cape and Quilts, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. It is all over the place. As a shopper, please uh, know that when you're navigating through the internet, that not everything is as it appears, and I'm not trying to put fear in anybody. I'm just trying to educate and uh, just raise awareness that this stuff happens all the time. It happens all the time. The only place I sell my stuff is Etsy. You won't find my stuff anywhere, but if you do a Google search, let me pull this stuff up. If you do a Google search for Lisa Cape and Quilts, you're going to find pages and pages of my stuff for sale, including quilts for $28. Let me pull this up. This is called the online shop. T-shirt quilt with sashing for $28.88. Let me just tell you, the photo they used is a YouTube video where I show you for free how to make a t-shirt quilt with sashing. I didn't even sell a pattern in that video. <laughs> None of my patterns are $28.88. Uh, 
I like to keep the prices of my patterns that you're printing at home fairly inexpensive, right? T-shirt quilt was sashing for $28.88. And guess what? They have reviews. They sure do. Where, how do I do that? Uh, 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 uh. Here we go. These are the reviews for the t-shirt quilt that I'm selling for $28. Really comfy. Wasn't expecting much for the price, but I'm super happy with these. I'm so glad, Candace. <laughs> and then Liz said, this is so cozy and comfortable. Almost perfect. For $28 for a quilt with sashing. I don't know if you have the right to complain about it. I don't know. Then Oklahoma Joe said, uh, these items were recommended to me by Instagram bloggers. I decided to try them, and I absolutely love them. They are great. <laughs> yeah, I even have reviews on a quilt that I'm not selling. So if you bought a quilt from online shop for $28, you're not getting that quilt. It does not exist. Oh, yeah, I make cease and desist orders, but I could have a full-time job sending those out. And that's what they, that's what they count on, y'all, that uh, people with small businesses don't have the time or resources to follow through with all of this stuff. So that's why if you're purchasing one of my patterns, you need to be on the Etsy website, nowhere else. Same with other people who are selling patterns. Make sure you're buying from the source and not just from these people. Here's another one. Uh, this was actually a photo from a sale I did at a flea market years ago. And I have this photo on my Pinterest. And that's where this photo came from. But it looks like they're selling these quilts for $28.88 too. Uh, let's see. This is one of my uh, SVG designs. I did a quilt using these and we did uh, screen printing with these SVG files in a video. Uh, this website is selling them. If you buy them from them, you will not get it. They will just take your money. Same with my nautical mug rugs. You won't get patterns from them. They'll just take your money. And then it goes on and on. So uh, Lisa Cape and Quilts, Quilt As You Go with Free Pattern. I don't know what that website is. Resizable SVG for printing and stencil making. That's not my website. The Camping SVG Files. That's not my website. Buy Lisa Cape and T-shirts, 59% off. That's not my website. <laughs> Buy Lisa Cape and T-shirt quilt cheap online. That's not my website. And y'all, that goes on for days and days. Here's some more. Instant PDF pattern with templates. That's not me. Quilt, sa quilt sashing lesson one, the sewing room channel. Uh, I included this one on there because a lot of things look like YouTube uh, sites and they're not uh, make sure you're on YouTube instant PDF download a paint by numbers collage style art quilt pattern that's not me and it goes on for days and days y'all days and days so uh, I really just want y'all to be protected right be protected know where you're buying not just from me but from anybody from anybody. If you have an Etsy shop, there's also ways you can secure your Etsy shop. There's ways you can set up uh, two-step author authorizations, right? I get a text alert if anybody else signs in or attempts to sign into my Etsy shop from a device other than this laptop or my cell phone. Uh, I get emails from them as well. I also have authorize authorize authorizing codes <laughs> words are hard today uh so that if someone took over my etsy shop 
and changed passwords and blocked me out. I have printed off my codes so that I can contact Etsy and say, this is my code. Someone has taken over my shop. If you have an Etsy shop, you should have those codes printed and saved in a file. Protect your stuff. Protect your stuff. <laughs> Denise said that's a great, yeah, that, isn't that a great price for a t-shirt quilt with sashing? Wow. 28 bucks. I'm going to scroll up and see. Yeah, go in and set up your shop and secure. And if you're if if you have to take a break from your Etsy shop and you're not going to be active for a while, you can put your shop on vacation. You can even close your shop temporarily and then reopen it back up. It will save all your lit. You don't have to relist everything. It saves all of that. But you can shut it down for as long as you need to. And that will help secure your Etsy shop while you're not active. When I said, I'm watching on my TV, my laptop was compromised and filled with viruses. So it's in the computer shop. The computer that you just got, Wanda, is in the shop. Didn't you just get that computer? Angel said, how did you come across these? All I had to do was go to Google and type in Lisa Cape and Quilts in the search box. And it's pages and pages of stuff, Angel. Pages of stuff that I did not create. Photos stolen. Uh, so from now on, I'm going to be watermarking all my stuff. Uh, and I've started putting my logo on thumbnails and stuff. But I need to do more. I need to be more diligent and uh, watermarking my stuff. A lot of that stuff is older stuff that uh, before I realize that this stuff happens. <laughs> but start watermarking your stuff. And uh, even then they're going to swipe it and use it. But at least your name is on it. And I don't know. I hope they're not falling for these scams too, Stephanie. I hope so too. But you don't know these, you know, you click on it. It looks like a legit website. I've clicked on them and they look legit. It looks real, but it's not. So just letting you know right now, as of 2021, the only place I sell my stuff is on Etsy. And I would go straight to Etsy and then Lisa Cape and Quilts on Etsy or my provided links straight to Etsy. If you're just searching the internet and finding stuff, that you don't know where you're going. Wow, it's going to cost 100 bucks to clean up your lap. Wow, Wanda, I'm sorry that happened to you. Luann, that's smart. I like to set up my PayPal. I like to use, I like to check out with PayPal because they might hack my PayPal, which has happened years ago. Someone hacked my PayPal. And when they did, I didn't have it set up so it was very secure. I didn't get, now I do. So I get text alerts if someone tries to access my PayPal account. But back then I didn't, and someone hacked into it and stole about 400 bucks. So now I don't let that happen either, right? But uh, so I check out with PayPal. So even if someone did hack my stuff, they're not getting my bank information. They might get whatever is in my PayPal account, which is not much because I transfer my stuff instantly now. If I get money in PayPal, it's transferred instantly. So yeah, we have to protect ourselves as uh, consumers, right? Wow, Debbie, you had someone applying for jobs using photos from our pay. Wow. Yeah, 
you can send them cease and desist letters, but I don't know who knows where that's going. I believe it's going to a computer in another country. Who knows where it is? Here's the thing, y'all. These people are so smart. Can you imagine the time that it takes to set up these web pages and the skills involved and how smart you have to be to hack this stuff and get money sent somewhere else versus where it's supposed to? Can you imagine if they used those skills to do something good for this world? Like, how awesome things would be. But no, they use all these brains and these skills in a devious way. It's sad. So yeah, there's my friendly alert. Don't get scammed. Or, you know, and the thing is, it's not just Etsy. I've... Uh, had people break into my Pinterest. Uh, I used to have a shop on eBay. Someone hacked my eBay account one time. So it's ev it's everything, y'all. So just set up, secure all your stuff, right? Secure all your stuff. Yep. Yep. So that was that. Let me move on to the Cathedral Window project I've started. So I was saying a little bit ago, there's a hundred ways to do everything, right? If you want to learn how to do something, invest some time because I guarantee you there's not just one way to do it. There's many, many ways. And not every way works the same for everybody, right? Uh, so... On my bucket list is a cathedral window quilt. I've always wanted to do one for myself that I'm keeping. And uh, it'll be one of the things I pass along to my family one day, right? It's on my bucket list. So I set out to learn different ways to make them. And there, <laughs> I've tried four different ways to make them. And I came up with a mixture <laughs> of all the ways combined into one. So this is what I started with. This is ta -da, ta -da. This is the first one I did. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so pretty. Tea stained muslin uh, from Joann's is one of my favorite muslins to use. Uh, and just these are mini charms, right? And so this was the first way. And uh, it's gorgeous. But the first way that I did it, uh, included some hand sewing, which took me, took me a while to do. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, no, I don't want to do any, <laughs> not for a big quilt. The hand stitching has to go. Uh, so I was like, let me keep searching different ways to do it. And then I found a video where, uh, no hand stitching. Here's my second one. No hand stitching. But the way that uh, the block constructed, the way it came together, took a little bit longer. And I was like, uh, let me keep searching. And uh, so I came up, I found another way. So there's the, the second way. Here's the, the third. Ooh, purple. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? Here's the third way, which took less time and still no hand stitching. And I was like, you know what? I kind of like that a lot. And then I tweaked it one more time. And when I did, I was like, there's no hand stitching and it takes less time. I think I could combine all these ways. And this is the first block for my quilt. Isn't that so pretty? My quilt will include several of these sized blocks put together. Isn't that so pretty? So I'm going to make mine scrappy, even though I kind of really love this with all purples. Uh, it really won't go so much in my bedroom. <laughs> so that'll just be a personal little wall quilt for me. This will go in my bedroom gorgeous. So I'm just going to do scrappy. 
with a lot of reds because I have a red accent wall in my bedroom. It'll look amazing. But because it's scrappy, whoever inherits this quilt down the road, chances are it'll go with whatever colors of their house too because it's going to have all the colors in it. Isn't that so pretty? So yes, we are going to do a YouTube video. Okay, first, if you're on Patreon, we're going to be doing a workshop on this. So get ready for that in November. But when I get a couple more of these size blocks made and put together, we're going to do a teaching video here on YouTube as well. So you don't have to be on Patreon. I'm going to show you my combination of all the different ways here on YouTube as well. But I want to get a couple of these blocks done so that I can make the video. Do you know what I'm saying? So it'll be a little bit, but not too far away, I hope. <laughs> so yeah, isn't that gorgeous? I love it so much. Yeah, it's so pretty, isn't it? Denise said, you can tea dye easy or use cotton. Yes, I have a video showing how you can do that if, if you want to learn how and you don't know how. Yeah, isn't the purple so pretty? I put polyfill in this one. So when you, when you lay it down, the little uh, diamond parts uh kind of puff up a little bit just giving a little bit more dimension to it is pretty <laughs> kim said uh daughter's old caregiver called it about a year quilt <laughs> I know. i'm not waiting a year to make the video though I want to make maybe three more of those units and then I'll make the video on it my quilt will not be finished when I make a video on it but yeah if I do that in my spare time hmm I don't I it'd be hard to estimate how long it's going to take to make that quilt Diana said I have the perfect jewels fabric for that let me just tell you though let me just tell you, you'd be surprised how much fabric, not these little pieces, but even these pieces. If you're making a bed size cathedral window quilt, you'd be surprised how much fabric you need. I've done the numbers. I've done the numbers. I, I've actually put together a pattern, six different projects you could make with this. So I've done the numbers up to, uh, is it a king size or queen size quilt? You need a lot of fabric. <laughs> but here's the thing. Once you make this, you're done, right? It's kind of like a quilt as you go. Uh, so you don't have to buy a batting. You don't have to buy backing fabric. You technically don't even have to bind it, right? But the fabric you need to make this is quite a bit. It's quite a bit of fabric. Charlie said, I, I see a king size blanket coming. That's what I need for my bed is a king size. How big is the window block? Okay, so, well, I'm going to measure these two, but they came out different sizes. <laughs> these little ones, let's measure it. Uh, not that, not the purple one. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine inches by nine inches. This one's like nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. But see, I was experimenting. This is several nine inch blocks put together. One, two, three. This is four nine inch blocks put together. 
It's just so pretty. So, yeah, that's going to be in my spare time. <laughs> my spare time quilt. What, uh, as a reminder to keep myself active, I do have a little basket of extra two and a half inch pieces. So there's that reminder sitting next to my sewing machine all the time. <laughs> These are just waiting to go in. Yeah, Angel said it's very fabric. It, you need a lot of fabric. You need a lot. Ah, oh, Jackie said I'm making a cathedral window as a memory quilt for my mom's t-shirts. Ah, oh, Jackie, I want to see that. If you're on Creative Crew, share pictures. But if you don't do Facebook and you're not in Creative Crew, send me, um, go to my Etsy shop. Send me a, a picture in Etsy. I'd love to see it. Yeah, Marion, as you're making this, you're doing all the steps. You don't have to go, now you could go back and quilt it. You know, there's <laughs> there's a hundred different ways. You could even do, you know, if you want to do a batting, there's other ways to make cathedral looking window quilts without it looking like this. And you do put a batting and a backing on it and quilt it, right? But this method, once you make this, you're done. That's it. Luann, you have uh, red in your bedroom, too. We do. We have one wall that is red. It was that way when we bought the house, and we've left it. And I kind of like it. It's like a deep royal red color. Angie said, do you still make custom t-shirt quilts? I don't see uh, I do, Angie, but I don't have any openings for the next 13 months. So you won't see uh, a custom t-shirt quilt listing. Actually, I've never sold custom quilt making services on Etsy. It's all been word of mouth and has been so much that I'm not taking orders because I'm booked from now until January 2023 <laughs> for custom t-shirt quilt commissions. So I'm not even, I don't even have any openings, but I've never listed that in Etsy anyway. It's all been word of mouth and, uh, and that's enough to keep just one person busy. Janet said, how do you piece them together? That's what I'm going to show. That's what I'm going to show in the video. Marian said, well, the larger cathedral block that you're showing us, is that going to be the one you're going to show the tutorial on? Yes. Yes. Is it hard to get on Etsy? Luann, as a seller or a buyer? Either one is not hard. Uh... Setting up an Etsy shop, there's tutorials. I don't have any because showing technical stuff like how to set stuff up like that is not really like, I'm not that great at explaining stuff like that, but there's some great tutorials on YouTube showing how to set up your account, setting up how to set up your shop, SEO stuff, uh, tagging stuff, photo sizes, all of that stuff. And then, okay, so Cathedral Window, that's coming soon. And then, so this won't be a live. This is going to be a pre-recorded video, a casserole, a casserole carrier. But I like projects that kind of double as two things, right? So I wanted to do a casserole carrier, but I don't want it to be just a casserole carrier. Like, there's my trivets, right? Oh, on the wall. 
They're not just trivets. You could use, they're kind of awkward as a hot pad, but you could use it, you know, two of them as hot pads, right? I kind of like my stuff to do like dual purposes. <laughs> so this is a casserole carrier, but not only that, it's a centerpiece for a table or a counter. Or when you get to where you're going, you could lay this down and lay your casserole on top of it. You can wash it if stuff spills on it, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it doubles as a mini quilt or a table topper, really. Centerpiece for your table. But it's a casserole carrier, y'all. It uh, doubles as that. So this is going to be a free pattern. And one of the things I like about this particular design and why I went with this, because I tried. I tried coming up with a pattern that was like one size fits all, but it wasn't working for me. And so then you had to have a 9 by 13, an 11 by 17, and an 8 by 8. That's three different patterns. That's so confusing. <laughs> this is a one size fits everything. And I've tried it with my largest casserole. I've tried it with my deep dish casseroles from Pioneer Woman. I tried it with a round pie pan. And I tried it with a bunt cake pan. It fits all of them. So yeah, you lay your stuff in there like that. And you pull it up. There's nothing in it. So it looks a little awkward right this minute. But that is the thought. It adjusts for the size of whatever dish you're using. Isn't that cute? But then when you get to where you're going or you're not using this, it doesn't have to go in a bin or a closet or a drawer. You can put it on your table. <laughs> so this pattern will be free. But I have a couple other. I don't know if y'all see that over there. That's going to be in the paid version, right? Different quilts as the topper. And then with the all this stuff to make it a casserole carrier. Cool, right? Yes, I'm excited about that. Allison, you're teleworking today. Harlan's teleworking today, too. Ingrid, do you make... Do you use these smaller things you make in your RV? Yes. Ah, oh, your new RV owners. Don't you just love it? Oh, I love it. Uh, so yeah, those little trivets I use in the RV all the time. And then the mug rugs, I use those in the RV all the time. The phone stand holders, I have two of those in the RV and we use those for watching stuff on our cell phones <laughs> sitting at the table. They're perfect. Pretty much everything I do has, you know, comes along with us. <laughs> so those are some things that are coming along. Aren't those colors gorgeous? Aren't they so pretty? I'm not going to show that yet, but that's just like a little teaser back there. And that's all the things that... Uh, I have coming up. I thought we could do a Q&A and if I've missed any of your questions and you're still hanging out, uh, now is the time we could chat about questions that I might have missed. Or if you've been saving questions, we can just hang out. And If I don't know the answers, maybe somebody else does. I don't know everything. Do you have a separate full-time job besides what you do on there? If so, how do you juggle everything? I work full-time and so afterwards. Nope, I full-time went into my business like five years ago, Diana, and it is a full-time job. Bless your heart. I imagine you are exhausted working a full-time job and then sewing after. But I did that. I did that for many years, so I know what it's like. But no, uh... Five years ago, I transitioned full-time, got my business license, got all the taxes stuff and all that. And uh, so now, as my business, let's see, I make t-shirt quilts on commission. 
I long arm for other quilters. I make uh, shirts and labels and tags. I do sublimation work. I make patterns. I make videos. Um, so it's a whole big combination of stuff all put together. All put together. But it is my full-time job. So when I come to work, I come in here. <laughs> and uh, it is full-time. It's beyond full-time most days. Working on a uh, boa kitchen towels for Christmas. Ooh. Barbara, I don't know that I've seen any pictures of those either. Oh, you're going to be retiring in four years and then going into sewing. Yay. Well, now is a good time to get acclimated, right? Start building a customer base. Start getting uh, all your ducks in a row. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that part-time in addition. It's just, I know, it's so long hours, right? But hopefully the sewing part of the stuff makes it kind of feel like you're not working at the same time because you enjoy it. I hope that it's that way for you. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with loving what you do and doing it as a business, right? Most of the time when I come in here to work, it doesn't feel like I'm working. There's a good percentage of the time where it does. <laughs> And hopefully that doesn't suck the joy out of the sewing part for you. When I use the glue stick on the pizza quilt, the paper sticks to the fabric even after ironing it. What am I doing wrong? Allison, uh, are you using the Elmer's glue stick? You might be using too much. Uh, it's hard knowing without actually seeing what you're doing, right? I would try using less glue. Try using less. Hello, Sally. You're finishing up the, the last quilt before the long arm comes down. Oh, it's a sad day. Hmm, I'm sorry. Turn on some happy music to try to change the mood. Or whatever, whatever changes, you know, for me as music. Maybe a glass of wine will help. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Diana's making lots of bags and wallets and pouches. I'm going to have to look into a boa kitchen towel. Barbara, I don't know what... Exactly, that is. I will look into it. I'm like Allison, what is a boa kitchen towel? <laughs> so yeah, I thought we would do this kind of format uh, because I just listed like all this stuff that... Uh, Lisa Cape and Quilts does as a business. Just coming and chatting is pretty awesome. Most of the time I miss all of this and I have to come back later that night and read all of the live chat. Uh, and I kind of like this. So we're going to do this more often. Uh, chatty Fridays or whatever we're going to call it. I don't know. Hanging out Fridays. <laughs> Sylvia, you've been sewing scout badges on uniforms. Dee is finishing the binding on the two quilts today. Dee, you are so fast. <laughs> Jackie said, they hang around your neck with a pot holder on each end. Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Ah, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I've seen tutorials for those.
Debbie said, I made a wallet last night while putting off what I should have been doing. How many of y'all do that? <laughs> that is how this came along. This is what we're doing next Friday. This is exactly how this came about. I was doing something else and saw Stitch with Rick's video and I was like, I'm going to hang out with Stitch with Rick for a little bit and next thing you know, I'm making one of these. <laughs> How many of y'all do that? So yeah, that's some of the stuff that's coming up. Uh, let me put on the screen because some of y'all have came in. Let me put on the screen one more time before we go for today. The stuff that you can cut to make this. Now next week we're going to do it a little bit differently, right? But I'm going to show you. Um, so this one, to close the little opening, I stitched around it. So it looks a little bit different, right? You can do that if you hate hand stitching like I do. Uh, but next week, I'm going to hand stitch it, and it's going to look a little bit more poofy, right? This kind of flattens it out on the edges when you do it this way. But, uh, yes. Ooh, there you go. Super cute. I also need to use thinner ribbon because it's going to hang a little funny, the ribbon that I used. <laughs> but it's super cute. So four different fabrics is what you need, right? Let's try if I can remember. Let's see. The 10 by 10 was the green fabric. So whatever fabric you want this accent to be that goes around. The 10 by 10 is that fabric. Uh, one of the five by five fabrics is this fabric. The red, that was a five by five and the back is a five by five. The four and a half by four and a half is going to go in this section where I've used blue. All right. So those are four different fabrics. Then you need, you know, your polyfill, some stronger thread. I'm going to be using some DMC thread, a sewing needle, a button for the middle. And then uh, about eight inches of ribbon for a hanger. And I would use a thinner ribbon. This one... Let's see, this is a little over a quarter of an inch wide. I really think it's too wide because it was hard just to get it right in that corner without <laughs> stitching it funny. So if you have a thinner ribbon, I would suggest using that. Oh, those ornaments would make a great gift. They really would. And they go together really quick. You'll be surprised. Of course, my video is going to take like an hour because we're going to be, you know, I take my time. But they actually do go together pretty quick. Yeah, I'm going to Google it, but I'm pretty sure I know exactly what you're talking about now. Uh, that they said it has the hot pads and it goes around your neck. I've, I think I've seen the videos on them. <laughs> so I do see the sun is trying to come out. That's good. It's hard. It's hard to get motivated when it's dark and gloomy outside, especially when you have a headache. <laughs> it really is. It's hard to get motivated. But I have stuff to do this afternoon. So at least there is some sun. Start, see, it's starting to come in. That's good. Can flannel be used for those ornaments? Sue, I don't see why not. I don't see why you couldn't. 
Sure. I think it might be a little bit thicker to work with. But if you're experienced in working with flannel, you know, if you use it, I don't see why you couldn't. Linda, hello. It's snowing where you are. Wow. It's gloomy in Chicago. Stephanie, you're welcome. Uh, can you say what the 10 inch fabric was used for? Yes. Okay. So see the green that uh, goes around the edges right here of this window. That's actually the 10 inch by 10 inch fabric. The thing is, you're only going to see that's as much of the 10 inch fabric that you're going to see in this ornament. It just has a little pop. <laughs> in this ornament. You don't see it anywhere else. It's just this accent right here. So that's the 10 inch by 10 inch. And then the red is the five inch. The back is the five inch. And this blue, that's the four and a half by four and a half. Allison, it's raining where you are. Barbara, you have blue skies. Well, I think I think it's past us too, or it's just about past us too. You're a couple hours like to the west of me, right? Is that the west of me? I think it's it's starting to pass us too. Sally, right? I am so sick of rain and dark. Can y'all hear my bird? I don't have the noise filter on, so you might be able to hear him. Marion said, uh, one eighth wide ribbon would work also. I think so too, Marion. Uh, and I have some. This is a little bit wider than a quarter inch, and I really feel like it's too wide. Marion said, what would you use a boa towel around your neck for? So if you're in the if you're in the kitchen cooking, like thank you. We have uh, I'm gonna take this off the screen. <laughs> if y'all need to see this before we go, y'all let me know. Uh, so if Thanksgiving, you know, holidays, if you're in the kitchen for long periods of time and you've got a couple casseroles in the oven, you're gonna be taking that out, uh, or you've got some pots on the stove. This uh, helps you carry around your hot pads without actually holding on to them, right? Because they just droop around your neck. But when you're ready to pull out the casseroles, you just put your hands in it, grab them, put your stuff down, pull your hands out. It's still there for the next time you need it. Oh, I know. Next week is daylight savings time already. Oh. Pat said he must be happy. Actually, when so when he goes off like that, he has seen something out the window that he is not happy about. So we have hawks uh, that fly around, uh, probably trying to get the squirrels. <laughs> I don't know what... Yeah, and uh, so we have great big red hawks and uh, a co couple of other types of larger birds in our area. Uh, but we have a couple hawks that must live, in, you know, somewhere close to our neighborhood or in our neighborhood in the trees. And if a hawk or a crow flies where he can see it, and he is located near a glass door that he can look out. If he sees those, he goes off. He gets really perturbed. 
And that was, I saw a hawk or a crow kind of noise. Trinita, you have a crank in your neck. Oh, those are the worst. It's hard to do anything when you have something going on with your neck, isn't it? I don't have any tips to tell you because I just usually just chill out and veg out till it goes away. <laughs> I can't do anything when my neck is messed up. That's horrible. So before we go, before we go for this week, uh, what are some of the things that you're trying, you are currently working on, you're trying to knock out? Maybe in time for the holidays, maybe for a birthday, something like that. What are some of the things you're knocking out right this minute? Like I know Dee's putting binding on quilts. Does anybody know what Trinita could do for her neck? I usually just try to work it out, Trinita, but it, that is so painful. Sandra's working on Christmas gifts. The pizza quilt has taken me so long. Keep going, Allison. Keep going. Try using a little less glue. You don't really need a lot. Just a little smidgen right in the middle. Just a, a little dot. And it should just lift right off of there. Sometimes I've used too much and the paper sticks a little bit, right? And then I have to print a new one and cut it out and start using a new one. But the good news is, if you're using an Elmer's glue stick, when you wash that quilt down the road, the paper's going to come off, the glue's going to come out. So if you do have little bits of paper, it's okay. Maybe try squirting a little bit of water, not soaking it, just a little bit, and rub the paper off. Ooh, Luann's doing a red and white quilt. Ooh, I saw a blue and white quilt on Creative Crew this morning. It was gorgeous. So the cathedral quilt is on my bucket list. A red and white quilt is on my bucket list. I did a blue and white quilt, and I sent that to a dear friend. So I want one for myself. So I have blue and white quilt is on my bucket list again. Sue's making all her family Minky backed quilts for Christmas. Ooh, Minky's so s snuggly. Trinita, Sylvia said try heating pad. Pat is hand embroidering, hand embroidering a couple of baby quilts. Wow. Juanita's making two table runners for Christmas. Uh, Miss Trinita, you're getting a couple suggestions, so stick around and read through that. Dee, I told you you're a quick. You're all done with the binding. <laughs> Sandra's almost done with her newest granddaughter's quilt. Wanda, me too. I love blue and white together. Linda, you're giving your, nep uh, your nephew his quilt today. Yay! Debbie said your happiness quilt is on my bucket list for yourself. Yay! I hope you do make it. Luann said, I have two more weighted blankets to do before Christmas. My son gave me a weighted blanket like two years ago. I love it. I love it. And then I started having hot flashes. I'm like, this thing is way too hot. <laughs> 
But the thing is, I love the weight and the comfiness of it. So it's like it's on and then it's off and it's on and it's off. There he goes again. That bird must be hanging out in our backyard. Marion's working on a quilt as you go flannel quilt for your sister. Purple and yellow are pretty together, yes. Trinita got some more churn dashes cut out, yay. Angel, you're working on a tree skirt. Ooh. I wanted to do a tree skirt video this year. I just don't think I'm going to have time to do it. <laughs> Are you going to make a tree skirt video? Where they can come to your channel and watch a tree skirt? I, I, I was, you know, that was on my maybe we'll do that video list. I don't think I'm going to get to that. Are you making a video for it? They can come check it out. Diana, you have five orders between now and Christmas. You go, girl. That is awesome. So Denim Quilting uh, says they're working on a disappearing signature quilt. Ooh. Signature quilt, meaning people have signed the blocks. Is that what you're meaning? <laughs> you're not going to get to it this year, Angel. Me neither, and I really wanted to. I really wanted to. I had an awesome time hanging out with you like a Friday a week ago. That was awesome. Peggy's making table runners with four hot, cozy bowl holder sets. Peggy, you're busy. I made one bowl cozy, and that took me forever. <laughs> that took me forever. We do, Angel. We should hang out like that more often. Ah, so after the quilt is made, then they sign it. That is cool. That is awesome. So when you said disappearing, you're going to do like a disappearing nine patch quilt and then they're going to sign it. That's an awesome idea. Ah, so, okay, Luann uh, would like some suggestions. She says, I also want to make a 120 by 120, that is big, bookcase quilt. I would like to use it as a cover when we close our upstairs for winter. Anyone make one? Well, you're in luck. Angel's here. She has a YouTube channel called Halo Inspirations. Shout out to Angel. Check out Angel's YouTube channel, Halo Inspirations, here on YouTube. She does a series on the book quilt. <laughs> Barbara said she made over 100 bowl cozies. Barbara, you have some patience. You have some patience. Sylvia's done the churn dash blocks and baby quilts, three baby quilts for Christmas to make. Ah, oh, Trinita's hubby is here. Michael said, my wife comes on here a lot. She hangs out with us a lot, Michael. She does. And he said, I just wanted to see what it was about. And drop some support mostly for her. She is awesome. Jeannie said, I've made 45 bowl cozies this past month. <laughs> I know you have, Jeannie. I don't know how y'all do it. 
I don't know how y'all do it. Sylvia's made a bookcase quilt with Harry Potter themed. Hmm, that's cool. Peggy, your husband wants a set of bowl cozies for himself. They are awesome to use. Here's the thing, y'all, and here's why y'all been so busy making them. They are awesome to have. Have you used one? Uh, I've had several people give them to me as gifts, and I love them. I use them all the time. I even have a set in the camper. They stay in the camper. I use them all the time. I just, I don't have the patience to make them. <laughs> and here's the thing. We're all different, right? I have the patience to do some stuff that not everybody has the patience to do. But then when it comes to other projects, I'm like, I cannot do that. I just, I can't. I don't have the patience for it. So we're all different. But that's why y'all are so busy, because people love them. And you can do them all the different themes, right, and customize them. People love to have them. I just don't love to make them myself. Yeah, Angel said it has her own its own playlist on her channel, the book shelf quilt. So <clears throat> you can check it out, Halo Inspirations. Yeah, Robin said, I love bowl cozies. I use mine all the time. Not a fan of making them, though. <laughs> Me too, Robin. I use mine all the time. Plate cozies. Scrunchins made plate cozies. Now, I don't know that I've seen plate cozies. Are they flat or do they, are they flat? I might have the patience to do some plate cozies. But here's my bowl cozies. If I make a bowl cozy, it's going to be a mug rug. And I'm going to say, just wrap it around your bowl and carry it like that. <laughs> That's my bowl cozies that I make. Doris, you like me. Yeah, you have to do what you have to do, right? I get it. Oh, Scrunchin said it's a it's a Scrunchin's invention. I was gonna say I don't know that I've heard of plate cozies, but that makes sense. Plates are hot. Maybe you'll have to do a YouTube video on it. Peggy said, I make bowl cozies to match the table runner. Hmm, that's smart. So it's like a whole set. It's a whole set. Well, y'all, I just want to thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. I know this is not like the tour typical kind of video, right? I do know some of y'all just turn these chatty videos on while you're working just to have some voices in the background. And I'm okay with that. I'll hang out with you while you're sewing. Yes. So if that's all you do with these, that's awesome. Uh, I think that would be awesome. We're going to do a couple of these Maybe even a couple of months, like every other week. I don't know. Uh, my YouTube channel is ever changing and evolving all the time. But I do know it helps me. These chatty videos like this do help me slow down a little bit with all the stuff that we do. So thanks for hanging out with me live, just chatting. <laughs> I imagine that I already have a thumbs down on this video and that's fine with me. <laughs> But it also gives me a chance to actually talk with you. And like, if you have questions, like we can help, right? We can help each other. I don't know all the answers, but I do think we'll be doing videos like this 
uh, a little bit more often than what we have been. Sylvia said, I turned your mini churn dash into a lavender bag for a soul. Ooh. Y'all, I'm all about the churn dash block here <laughs> recently, right? Along with a lot of other people and creative crew. I don't know if you see that. It's a big churn dash block. Jody said, I've made cozies, but I don't put them in the microwave. Yeah, Jody, I think generally the bold cozies, I don't think most people do put them in the microwave. Or do they? I don't put mine in the microwave. Maybe people do. I don't know. Oh, you're so welcome. Dorothy, thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, my head is splitting. And I still have some work to do this afternoon, so my day is not over. But my head hurts. It is a nice break from the sewing, right? Yeah, Charlie said that there is microwave-proof batting. So if you do want to put them in the microwave, yeah, you got to change up some stuff, right? All cotton. All cotton. Cotton. 100% cotton fabric. 100% cotton thread. Uh, they have the wrap and zap batting. So, yeah, you got to be on your A game with the stuff that you use, right? But then you could use it in the microwave. Michael said, I don't know much about any of this. It seems interesting, though. I'm just a singer songwriter. Ooh. But I like all art stuff. Well, you're in good company, Michael. And you're welcome to hang out with us anytime. Uh, I like all kinds of art stuff. Primarily, we do sewing and quilting here on this channel. But if you paint or you make stuff, we would love to see pictures. Trinita can share them on Creative Crew. Like, I like to paint. I've been painting since I was 15 years old. You can share that kind of stuff. If you make stuff out of wood, whatever, uh, feel free to share pictures in the creative crew. Harlan plays the cello. Sometimes he posts a video playing the cello. Music is in the arts. So if you write a song and you sing it, we would love to hear it. <laughs> Oh, you use your mug rugs for bowls. Yeah, like I just wrap a mug rug around it. <laughs> I carry it. Thank you. Yeah, my head. Thank you so much. I got Dawn hooked on mug rugs. They're fun, aren't they? I like a project where. You could start and finish it pretty quickly, right? Like when you start a mug rug, chances are you're going to finish it shortly after, right? Those are good projects for when you're working on something bigger that's taken forever and you just feel like you got to finish something. Mug rugs. And you can make, yeah, you can... Uh, Give them as gifts. That's awesome. Angel, you got a headache too. I don't think the weather is helping at all. And now it's getting dark again, so maybe Barbara was right. It hasn't passed us yet. Lenny said, you always have the best t-shirts. <laughs> I'm new, so I don't know if you have a huge stash already or do you buy them all the time? Well, I bought a whole bunch back in February for my birthday, Lenny. I did. Uh, I got some birthday money back in February and I bought like seven or eight different quilting themed shirts. And then I started making quilting themed shirts and added those to my stash. 
primarily you see a rotation of those eight or nine or ten shirts all the time in my videos. Do you have a pattern for that mug rug? Gina, yes. Isn't that cute? It's here on my YouTube channel. Uh, like if you go to YouTube and you want to find it quick. Oh, this one's dusty. Uh, Lisa Cape and Quilts. I have a whole playlist for mug rugs. So, yeah, go to my playlist, mug rugs, and you'll find it in there. This one needs to go in the wash. It's dusty. <laughs> am I drinking lots of water? I am. But um, I might be counteracting with the water with the coffee. But sometimes the caffeine from the coffee helps. Angel, say it ain't so. Say it's not so, Angel. She said, uh, I have never made a mug rug. <laughs> That's all right. Not everybody likes the same stuff, right? I love a mug rug. Oh, here's the thing. I use them all the time for everything. Like this one is my mouse pad. And it's cute. And I can change it out all the time, right? Super easy. But it's also little wall quilts you can change out. Uh, I make them and eat my snacks on them and throw them in the wash, right? But this is my dusty mouse pad one. So I use them for all kinds of stuff. You need to do an owl mug rug so we can make it with you. Oh, let me write that down. Owl mug rug. Just letting you know. I have seen some owl mug rug patterns on Etsy. They're not mine, but they're out there and they were super cute too. So if you need one immediately, uh, check out some different sellers on Etsy. Because I've seen some and they were adorable. I don't know how fast I could jump on that, but I wrote it down and we'll put it on a list <laughs> of stuff to do. Jody, you haven't made a mug rug either? That's all right. Oh, Angel said, I have plenty of orphan blocks that could be made into mug rugs. Yes. What else are you going to do with them? Yeah, here, here's the awesome part, is usually if I make a pattern for a mug rug, we do a video on it, right? <laughs> usually. But, and here's the thing, some of my patterns are free, right? So it might end up, we end up doing an owl mug rug that's a free pattern, but then it might go in my Etsy shop. Who knows? But usually with my stuff that comes out, whether it's the free or the not free, I usually have a tutorial walking you through it. So that's cool. Right? Well, y'all, it has been a lot, as much fun as you can possibly have with a headache. That's what I've had today. I've had that much fun. <laughs> uh... If you just came in as we're closing out, come back to the replay because I'll put on the screen and the beginning, somewhere in the middle, uh, the fabrics you need to make next week's project. We will be going live Friday, 12 noon, Eastern Standard Time. If you're not subscribed, you might want to do that. Hit the bell notification and choose all. When you hit that bell, you get like three different choices. It all so you get notified for all this stuff <laughs> and uh, we'll be here next Friday that's what we're doing I want to thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today if the chatty thing is not your thing we're sewing next week and uh, yeah just thank y'all so much for hanging out with me 
Thanks for helping out each other. That's one of the things that I love about this community and everyone who's here during the lives is that when someone has a question, y'all help each other out. I love that. Thank you for doing that. It's one of the big reasons why I do the lives in the first place. Because to be really honest, I'm not, I mean, I get really nervous doing the lives. And uh, y'all are one of the biggest reasons I keep doing it. So thanks for helping each other out. And uh, we will see y'all next week. Bye, everybody.